By the way, shout out to students of the Avenger High School, yo. <laughs> Yeah, hello people. Welcome to the introduction of Galvanic Cell and Electrochemistry, presented to you by Hichikozan Sensei, featuring Neru chan yo. <laughs> Electrons flow between the electrodes, and one of them oxidizes, and the other reduces the result of the flow of electrons yo. The galvanic effect occurs when you have two different metals come into contact and are also enjoyed by an ionically conducted medium, yo. The reducing electrode is called the uh, cathode, and the oxidizing electrode is called the anode, yo. The generation of voltage between them depends on how reactive one metal is versus the other, yes. This fact is the main driving force for corrosion of metals in moist area, yo. This is due to the composition difference of the grain boundaries between the metals, and that creates a voltage between its grain boundary. Yo. The galvanic series is an arrangement of different metals according to their measured relative potential in a given electrolyte. Most commonly, seawater is used as a standard in most galvanic series charge, as is the given electrolyte, and each electrode material is compared to a standard hydrogen electrode usually made of calomel or silver chloride for reference. The more reducing the electrode is, the more positive is its measured potential. And henceforth, the more oxidizing the electrode is, the more negative the measured potential is. The galvanic cell is a device which makes use of two dissimilar metals in a given electrolyte. The total cell voltage can be measured by probing the two electrodes with a voltmeter, and for each half cell, the voltage is measured simply by adding in a standard hydrogen electrode and probing the voltage between that particular electrode and one of the half cell electrodes adjacent to it. The salt bridge allows observation of each half cell by separating apart the reactions occurring at each electrode but still allowing for a steady flow of ions between them. A good battery or galvanic cell makes use of measured potential values which are far apart which results in a higher cell voltage. The anode measures a negative potential while the cathode measures a positive potential. And for actual battery design, the salt bridge in practice is replaced with a separator to increase its surface area often forming stack cells in series to obtain an overall higher cell voltage. A half cell is a galvanic cell which contains two electrodes and a membrane or salt bridge separating the two compartments. The solution where the anode is located is called the analyte, and the solution where the cathode located is called the catholyte. I mean. The salt bridge allows for a slow and steady diffusion of ions through the two containers while a membrane allows for selective diffusion of ions either both or only one type of ion through the two chambers. The half cell reactions occur around the electrodes in their individual chambers and can be observed physically by a distinct color change between the two cells after some time or by probing quantitatively the half-cell potential of each electrode by inserting in a standard hydrogen electrode in each of the chambers and measuring their voltage. Yeah. The inverse of a galvanic cell is an electrolytic cell. And instead of a voltage being generated at the electrode, the electrodes are hooked up to an external power supply, which supplies a steady voltage and current through the cell. The voltage applied can vary, but any voltage above a theoretical electrochemical reaction has its energy wasted as heat. Example, taking roughly 2 volts to split water. We have two setups, one running at 2 volts and reading out 4 amps, versus one running at 4 volts reading out 12 amps. Assuming 50% efficiency for the 2 volt setup, the 4 volt setup it will be way less efficient. The anode is always hooked up to the positive end of the power supply and the cathode is hooked up to the negative end. 
This is the inverse from the galvanic cell because in a galvanic cell, the electrodes gather at the anode, giving it an overall negative charge. With an electrolytic cell, we are forcing out electrons at the anode, which means in order to pull out more, we need to give it some positive polarization. Lead acid batteries are a type of rechargeable battery that gives you a good idea of a setup, which is both a galvanic and electrolytic cell. These have been used practically for, for some time, since they are quite robust and can deliver very high amounts of current. The setup consists of two chambers filled with 34% sulfuric acid and a plastic or paper separator and two electrodes initially made of lead or one electrode made of lead oxide and the other made of lead sponge. This is a reversible reaction used in rechargeable batteries and ideally they can be repeated endlessly but practically eventually the electrodes get damaged due to repeated charge cycle and dendrite formation. Luckily, lead-acid battery is one of the easier batteries to recycle due to its simple construction. When discharging, it is a galvanic cell as the lead dioxide acts as a cathode where the lead goes from its oxidation state of plus 4 to plus 2, forming lead sulfate. When it's recharged, however, the lead oxide is now the anode and the lead dioxide is formed as you re-oxidize the lead 2 to plus 4. Once again, yes. Well, that's it, folks. That's all you're getting out of me right now. So, yeah. Go check out the Catboy Chemical Society. We're always accepting new members. We do several types of research. You can do what you want. You can do your own projects. Or you can just mooch along. It don't matter.